Yeah, you should, Isaiah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Talk About Ice. What a pleasure it is to be here tonight once again. I just love sharing the truth about crystal methamphetamine via people like Lewis who have survived ice addiction. Say hello to Lewis. Uh, he's uh, put his hand up to share hey, his... G'day, hey, Lewis. Lewis. Hey, everyone. Uh, he's put his hand up to share his story, a pretty, a pretty crazy story, and we're going to go into all of that very <coughs> shortly, uh, taking him on a wild journey. So, yeah, looking forward to having a yarn to him about all that. Uh, lots of things going on, guys. Lots of lots of cool stuff happening. Uh, big shout out to Andrea and Glenn, who are down in Sydney on the start of their global tour. Is it global yet? Is it a world tour? <laughs> um, uh, they're touring the country, actually, guys, so they've just started that, meeting with uh, the premiers, hopefully, of each state to uh, show them our, the system that we would like to implement across the country, the educational program that we have in place. Uh, we would like to see every child uh, receive this educational workshop that we have. So, uh, what else? The 19th of... It's November now, isn't it? 19th of this month. So we're getting closer to the launch in Melbourne, guys. Once again, if you'd like to come down there, meet the family, uh, everyone's going to be down there. The 19th, check out Facebook. You can buy tickets through Sezen on Facebook. Check that out. It's going to be a very cool night. Lots of cool stuff, guys. We are in need of volunteers. Uh, if you'd like to volunteer, get in touch with us uh, on 075 665 no one's popped up yet. I'm sus on that. Is that actually working, bro? Is there anyone on there? Yeah, two people. Two people? It's not coming up on there yet? Yeah, it's up top two. Is, um... Andre, if you're online, do you want to type something up? It's three. Three, so it's just coming up there. Yeah, wait for the filter in. I like seeing it. Rob! Rob! Yeah, but come on. <laughs> What's happening? Can we get it up on the uh, TV so we can read the comments and the, um... Comment just came up now. Here we go, Di! Good to see you again, Di. On every week, it's awesome to see you. Thank you for all the support. While I'm at it, guys, the people that have been emailing on let's talk about ice at gmail.com, thank you very much. If we haven't got back to you, don't fret, we will get back to you. Um, specifically, though, there was a lady that emailed us about a heart disease. Um, her husband was using intravenously. That accidentally went to the trash, um, and I was really interested in reading that. So if you could email that back, that'd be fantastic. Usually there's like 8 million people on by now. Yeah, What's going on? on? They're coming on. Hey? Just like up. No Too on. easy. Is there anything else? Usually there's way more. That's about it, guys, so let's just get straight into it. Let's get straight into it. Let's do it. Thank you, bro, for coming in. Um, how clean, bro, are you? Four and a half months, Jay. Congratulations, yeah, mate. That's thanks, awesome. Man. Not everyone can do it like we share. Often, only two percent of people get yeah. clean. So, well done, man. Thanks, bro. So, this is, this is, mate, we want people to know the truth about ice. We don't mm. want to sugarcoat it. No. Uh, we hear time and time again that it's hell. I know personally that it's hell. Yeah. Uh, so let's. Let's go back to the beginning, mate. How was your upbringing? We hear it doesn't discriminate. Tell us about your upbringing. Yeah, that's a, that's a big part of my story, you know. Um, you learn that later on through the um, through the recovery process about the disease of addiction, why we are the way that we are, and um, you know, drugs don't discriminate, particularly methamphetamine. You know, um, I come from uh, born and bred here on the Gold Coast. From um, you know, could it couldn't. I couldn't be more blessed with a more loving, caring, nurturing, beautiful family, you know. I'm um, one of five kids and uh, had a fantastic, excellent upbringing. You, could, you couldn't, couldn't get it any better. Picture perfect, really, you know. Um, so, uh, so it doesn't, um, you know, sort of... It doesn't take away anything from that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're from the streets or, or whatever, it, you know, in fact, Jay, I'd say, in fact, from my experience and what I've come to know, um, people that have got more, have got more to lose, and, and the more, 
the more disciplined you are, the more successful you, you are, the more stable you are in society, so to speak, uh, the worse that meth and, and ice can get you because, because you've got, you've got uh, that, that, uh, that drug delusion that, that, uh, that happens through the process of, of thinking that you've got this. You know, so, so a lot of the it takes takes somebody a lot longer, I feel, that, that's pretty together, that's onto it, to for those ramifications of um, of the disaster of meth to really get you. You know, you hold on to that that um, that false that false identity that you you know that you've got it under control and I can handle this and, and for me that, that was a big big part. It was only until, you know, most recently in rehab that I that I let go of, you know, being a um, being a, a highly functional addict, so to speak, you know, like it got me like it got everyone else, brother. Talk to me, bro, about early on. Were there signs of addiction early on? Were you drinking? Yeah. What? What? How yeah. did it all start? Yeah, typical, typical um, Aussie male growing up in our society, you know, dr uh, drugs, alcohol, and the party lifestyle. You know, it's just sort of what we do. Um, you know. Uh, as unfortunate as that is, that's that that's that's how it is mm. out there, and um, you know it's a culture, and uh, and and um, you know up until only this recovery, which is my first one, um, I've always been that. You know, I've been a, a, a wild boy, so to speak, and, and love the partying, love love the the culture of it all, and and it started really early. You know, I um, got out of primary school into high school and um, picked up alcohol, tobacco alcohol and marijuana pretty much straight away and um, you know from that minute that's oh, that's sort of drugs and um, and alcohol and the party and everything is just what came hand in hand with um, with the people that I associated with and it's just what it's just what we did man so yeah, yeah and, you know if, uh, uh, I realized only uh, in rehab that um, I'm 32 just turned now and uh, and I've I've been you know, had one substance or another in my system since, you know, for 17 years. Mm. It's Isn't it? It's, it's sad, really, that our culture is so okay with substance abuse, Fully. I feel. You know, it is so ingrained in our, in our society. Probably more anywhere than around, than, than any of the other cultures around the world. Or yeah, it's just okay. It's just you know, okay. It's okay that our young teens are getting smashed and it's stuff like that. what we do. Well, for, for me, it's not okay. And, you and know, it's hit from everywhere. Society hits you everywhere. It's... Mm. It's yeah. just what we do. Yeah. Mate, let's, um, let's go to the first time that you used ice. How, how did that come about? Do you remember specifically the first time? Yeah, I remember it in detail. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's unlike anything else. you never forget that, for sure. Um, you know, my, my, uh, my progression to ice was one pretty stereotypical, um, and I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate to it. It was just a, a natural progression of, of, you know, the drinking drug culture. And, um, you know, back when, back when we were smoking weed growing up with my mates and stuff, you know, the only time you'd ever see a glass pipe or whatever is, is on, a, on a whimper as you're walking past, you know, the door from, um, from one of your mate's older brother's crew. Mm. And you might say, oh, what's that? But, but it was shone, you know, it wasn't Mm. It wasn't how it is now. It's just so blasé and, and accepted. So, so, go more into that so people know. A lot of people out there don't know how prevalent. You know, you talk well, about well, the glass yeah, pipe. Yeah. You know. Well, you look at you look at like the the the, the uh, party drug scene. You know, clubbing and ecstasy, MDMA trips, um, all of that stuff, coke and um, amphetamine. Speed. So speed was the thing. Um, and, uh, and that's what we got used to do a lot, going out clubbing, and, and that was around, you know, but, um, but the ice wasn't, and um, it was only, you know, I got, I've, I've been addicted to ice now for nearly six years, and, um, and, and really, uh, it was probably only a couple of years maybe before that that, you, that it was sort of around a little bit, but not much. I, I think that it's only really become what it has so rapidly, so quickly, in like, you know, the last probably five to eight years, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Um, so so it, it came around that it was just, you know, another another night at my place with the boys and, um, you know, at the bar and that, just another 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 party, another another session with the lads and what we do and um, and the pipe was there and um, and it wasn't because because of the culture and how it is, uh, 
it wasn't for me, and, and I suppose that my involvement with the scene was one that um, is probably a little bit deeper than, than a lot of other people. So, so it wasn't a big, massive deal for me where, not like heroin, for example, you know, heroin had the stigmata around it that uh, it's just, and, and, and I've never gone there. You know, I've, ne I've never smoked it, I've never snorted it, because I've, all, I've, I've known for a long time that I have an ad ad addictive nature. And um, so that's always been a line in the sand. And, and why? Because, because it's, it's no man's land of return after that. I, I know myself and I know that if I, if I took that, then I'd like it too much. And, um, but, but ICE hasn't been around and, and um, it's only now through groups like AIC and stuff that the awareness is getting out there about meth and how catastrophic it is. But, but that's been there for heroin for a long time. And um, so when I saw, saw it there, it was just sort of like the boys were there and uh, it was just like, yeah, let's try this. And bang, straight away, it was like, whoa, you know, obviously I'd, 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 I'd done the smallest board of drugs for, for a while and, um, and this was like nothing else. This just went, boom, you know, elevated me straight away to, to the next level. And, um, and I was addicted you know, not even once, as we say here, and um, from that very first time, it was it was something that I become quite intimate and connected with, and and as you will find out, that yeah. How quickly, mate? You you had that pipe initially, and how quickly were you using? You know, yep. were you using daily? Not not at the, not not at the start. Um, you know, until until ice. Uh, I'd always, I'd mentioned before about being a, you know, a bit of a disciplined addict and, and, and I do, I do um, quite highly regard myself for being, um, you know, being, being quite controlled and, um, you know, in control of myself and, and capable and, mm -hmm. and discipline is, is something, you know, uh, that, that is a, a def, definite uh, strong characteristic of mine. So, so, um, I've been able to manage all of the other drugs, mm. all right. And, and at that time, when I first tried ice, I was, um, you know, my business and what I was doing, selling property and in real estate, was uh, at, at a high, high level. Um, you know, I tried, I tried ice, and um, I, I knew because of, because of the connection with it, it had me straight away that I had to be careful with it at the start, mm -hmm. and. Um, and that's what I, that's what I did, but but those boundaries got broken down pretty quickly, Jay. You know, so I I started, you know, trying to keep it to a weekend. Um, I was working huge hours and um, and you know doing ten to twelve open homes on the weekends. So so I was trying to, I was in effect, I was trying to hold out to the weekend. But you know, people mm. buy houses on weekends and that sort of thing. And um, you know, so so that that. It, 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 it had me very quickly straight away. So all of that, all of that stuff that I thought that I could control it and stuff, it was it was really controlling me. And um, very rapidly, very quickly, it turned into a big habit. Very different to every other drug. We hear that time and time again. Yeah, mate. So you've spoken briefly about the real estate. So explain how your life was. Obviously, you weren't down in the dumps. You were doing no, okay at, at that time. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, I was doing okay. Um, you know, I. Uh, I was probably one of uh, one of the boys that a lot of everybody looked to. Um, you know, I, I, for for the age that I at, was at, I, I was, um, you know, as I said, I was doing really well and uh, was in a was in a good place. And um, and uh, yeah, ice very quickly started to started to take all of that away. Um, you know, really really quickly, it did change yeah. things straight away. But, yeah. Um, Can you tell us how how quickly? It it did, Lewis. Like, you know, how quickly did it? You you were saying about being a functional addict and being mm. in control somewhat, mm. but it started to started to work its way in. How quickly? When did you maybe think, oh wait, this is actually got a hold of me? Mate, yeah. look, I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm I love the not even once thing, you know, and I'm an advocate of that because I believe that the drug was working in me straight away, mm. and the power of the drug is it doesn't matter how staunch you think you are and, and for all the lads and stuff out there that reckon that they, they own it and, and they got it, then, uh, then I'm here to tell you that, yeah. that it's a completely different story and it, and, it, and it takes a little bit of mustard and courage to admit that because I consider myself one of those men. But, but um, 
but the power that, that you've got inside yourself without the, without the tools of recovery that they teach you, um, you're completely powerless against it. You know, this is, this is a very, a very, uh, very powerful drug that, that will have its way with you and that way is, uh, is a one-way ticket down into hell and if, you, if you're very lucky, like the few of us, you might you might get back out of it, and, and that's what this is all about. You know? mm, absolutely, man. I heard a good quote on that. People say they're in control of it. You say you're in control of it, but have you tried to leave? Yeah. 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 Have you actually tried to leave it yet? Yeah. You know, I've that's heard right. so many people say, "I've got this, I've got this," ah. but have you tried to leave yet? Try to leave, and then tell me you've Mate, got I've it. Mate, I've tried. I've, I've I've tried. I've tried everything in the book, and um, you know. I, I, I keep referring back to what we learn in recovery because that's really the, the crux of why I'm sitting here and I look far better and you know because I'm in recovery and, and I've got through it and I've survived it. Um, but you know the, the, what what makes me an addict isn't the amount that I take or or, or you know getting into the splitting hairs about the um, you know the ins and outs of it. The, the, the thing is that and with meth, the meth is not like any other drug that I know, and, and, and I know most of them um, from personal experience, uh, I can't put it down. Once I start, I cannot stop. Uh, and it's only been, and, and I cannot stop through, through uh, near-death experiences, overdoses haven't stopped me, uh, all the institutions haven't stopped me, getting incarcerated haven't stopped me, um, getting, uh, getting locked in uh, quite heavily into the mental health system, on involuntary treatment orders and, and seeing psychologists and, and an array of different people sitting in front of week in, week out. That hasn't stopped me. Um, you know, nothing that I could do. Uh, you know, the love and the family, despite me continually, you know, continuing to, to defy um, the fam my loving family that are just, just, just clinging, clinging to me, hoping that that I would get through this, that that didn't keep me clean. I, I could, you know, the, the power of this drug is just, um, you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm stumbling around trying to find an appropriate, uh, you know, explanation of it, Jay, but, it, you know, this, this, this drug is, uh, is something that's, that it's only through um, people that have they've had the experience with it that can, that can try and put some sort of, sense on it and I guess it you know the, the best way of doing this and why it's working is because this is this is the talking the real you know the, the mm. stories and, and that sort of thing trying to classify it with words or explanations or fancy dancy stuff it sure. doesn't work you know you've got to keep it simple for what it is mate can you go you you said what I picked up on then is you couldn't put it down I can relate to that tell the people that feeling when you say you couldn't put it put it down a lot of people out there be like what do you mean you couldn't put it down what did it feel like if you had to go without it? You know, what were the feelings associated with that? Oh, the feel, the feelings. You know, like I, um, I through my through my ice addiction, I, I suffered quite extreme um, and very deep psychosis, amphetamine psychosis. So the feelings are, um, well, you know, I've mentioned before that I'm I'm pretty in control of myself and stuff, and and. Um, and the weight that that's caused me with the with the with the ice, what it does, it gets, it gets, you know, you, you're taking this drug and you're putting it into your into your body, and what we're starting to understand um, week week by week is how catastrophic uh, the damage does to you, and and you know, in in particular in in our brain and our mind, and um, it gets in there and it just completely mixes it up and, and washes it all up. So the emotions are. Uh, a, a total array of 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 stuff and um, and and trying to pluck out uh, the good and the bad as you go on and the addiction gets deeper it sort of takes over and um, you know the darkness of it all you know the, the emotions the guilt the shame the remorse of what you're doing you know you know and that that's also that's also one of the the uh, deadliest aspects of meth is that it puts a blindfold over you. Um, you know, you're usually the last one, uh, and it's only to a point where you know that it's that it's almost um, it's almost lights out. Uh, that that uh, through an intervention or something like that, and I'd had a, had a couple of them through the time with my family and that sort of thing, and 
and uh, everyone else can see what's happening. And, and uh, my fall from grace was 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 very uh, was was quite extreme, you know, to put lightly. You know, here I was, I was a, an up and coming young shot businessman here on the Gold Coast and had everything and and. Um, you know, and and a well-known person here here on the coast as well, and uh, and quickly that slid very quickly that slid to to a polar opposite of the person that I was, and it was very evident in the community and everywhere I went um, that I was using ice, uh, and uh, you know, so so very quickly I was here, and then um, and then it just continued to to get worse and worse, and. Um, yeah, just. You said you said that you. I know you were doing real estate and that. Mm. So you could fund your habit initially. Did that ever change? Was there any times where you, you know, did you lose? Yeah, all yeah, of that. Yeah, to... okay. Yeah, good, good, good insight, Jay. So, so I, I was going through relationship um, difficulties, which is a common common thing for a lot of people, and um, I've been in a long term relationship and. Um, and that had its issues as well, and um, and I look back at it now, only recently in the last last little bit, and, and I can see that I'd been using ice. If you go back to a little bit of my story, for for you know, on a little bit here, a little bit there through the week or whatever, I'd been doing that for about 12 months. With those relationship difficulties really started to surface, and and um, you know, I'd like to be able to discredit that meth didn't play its part, and and that that we were just going our own separate ways, but. It, but it uh, it certainly did, you know. Um, so so the ice was there, working working its darkness in that, and and that that ended, and, and shortly after, of course, um, the ice picked up, and that's when my, my habit started to to really fire, and it went from it went from every couple of days or whatever to to a daily, full time full time using, and 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 within a couple of months, Jay of of using uh, a lot bigger amounts, um, I started to make some, some very, uh, the biggest decisions that I could possibly make in my life at that time, completely under the influence uh, and, and un under the power of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the, the dangers of the ice. And, uh, and of course, none of, those, none of those things are good. They, mm. you know, ice, ice doesn't want you to feel, feel good. And, and, and at that stage, the elevation of the drug, you hear that you, you're always chasing the first time you use that first high, and it's very like that. It, it, it's like that, you know. You can you start to use it at the beginning, and you've got that that high and stuff. But very quickly, as you start to use more, which is the nature of the drug, it's highly addictive, and and um, that that's what will happen to the majority of people. Very quickly, that 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 elevation drops, and 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 the real monster comes out, and so. So um, I made some huge decisions in that place, and I quit my business. And I built my business up over the last five years to be to be at, at the at the top of the pyramid, so to speak, of it absolutely booming. And 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 uh, and I went, see you later, yeah, and, yeah. and and let it go. And then went into full time addiction with ice, and turned my back on it all. And um, and then and then of course. Uh, the progression of that then led me into um, the lifestyle of the drug, and that's you've got you've got uh, using, and then you've got the lifestyle of users, mm. and it's um, explain to the people about the lifestyle of users that a lot of people out there don't know the difference. You know, they might use it recreationally for a little bit, but this this other side of the world, yeah. which I feel you're talking about. Tell tell the people about that other side. Well, you know, we spent time talking about about where where the drug sort of takes you softly, and um, and once you get to that place of using, uh, the drug doesn't discriminate, does it? No, no, it doesn't. That. So you're all the same. Yeah. And and the drug's in control, isn't it? So so you're all chasing the same stuff, and um, and because everything else drops at the wayside, all of your ethics, your morals. Uh, what you can, how how you'd really b built your life up through the guidance and nurturement of your family, do it, you know the ethics and the morals of you know being a being a uh, a contributing member of society and and the system and all of that stuff, that all goes and and the drug is king, and so employment goes because you can't 
you mm. can't work and the lifestyle takes over and then you get into the feeding feeding your habit and um, and because the ice strips all of the, the goodness out of you and replaces it with this with this dark evil stuff um, you know those those models and ethics seem like a, a little glintering you know light over there and you're, you're in this dark place and, and you're chasing the drugs so of course um, you don't have the, the connection with all of that, that stuff that, uh, that you did right mm -hmm. um, and now you're doing all of this stuff that you did, did wrong because the drug's in control and, and of course you're not working, you're not doing all of these things that, 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 that you, you know, to live a happy, harmonious, loving, caring life which is what we all like to do. Um, that's all gone and, and of course so you've got unemployment and, and, and you've got feeding the habit so you've got every, every day you, I, I said that you couldn't stop and I couldn't pick it down so it's a constant rimmerall of um, using, chasing, using, waiting, using you know and, and of course you need, you need money to do that as well and, uh, and if you don't if you don't have the money, then there's got to be other ways that you substitute that, and there's an array of different stuff for both male and female, and collectively um, as people. So the lifestyle, um, they, the, you know, you get into that, and it's it's not all of, uh, you know, the the, the law-abiding, uh, righteous citizens. You know that that's over there, and this is what you do, and and it's and it's that world. It is a world inside itself, and um, and it only it only continues. To get worse, and unfortunately, only what is it, two percent? Yeah, two percent. That's right. So, so it's just a continuation of, of um, you know, in Narcotics Anonymous, we, we have a little thing saying jails, institutions, or death, mm -hmm. um, and and that is very true because that's where that's where it's going to lead you. Yep. Um, so the lifestyle you've got, you've, there's there's really you don't have those ethics, those boundaries. What what you used to. You know, and typical things with drugs is, is like, um, you know, you look at intravenous stuff and, oh, I'd never do that. Oh, or I'd never do that for, for the, the drug is so powerful um, and you've got this huge addiction that you can't let go of, that you've got to feed. Mm. Those morals and ethics are way over there. You're here with all of these other people that are the same. Mm. Bad mixture. Mm. Mate, tell us about some of the darker stuff. You mentioned mental health, you mentioned incarceration. Yeah. Tell us, you also mentioned psychosis. Yeah. Can you share with the people some of the darker stuff that you experienced so they can get an insight into, you know, yeah. what you went through in those really dark times? Because obviously you had to hit rock bottom somewhere, mate. Sure. Because you're sitting here today clean. Yeah. So share with the people some of the darker stuff. Yeah, another thing in, in Narcotics Anonymous NA is that, you know, rock bottoms have basements and I, I feel that in recovery, uh, you know, somebody that, that's had and hit rock bottom is, is in, a, in, a, in a more um, supportive place for themselves and, and therefore other people to, to have that awareness of really wanting to change. And that's why this, this um, what we're doing here is is such a good thing because you know you don't need to get there too in order for it not to happen you mm -hmm. know the awareness mm -hmm. the education and stuff wasn't around and mm -hmm. really it's only just starting now mm -hmm. and the, the whole idea of this is 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 for you guys to hear our stories that have, we've been there and done it mm -hmm. and for you to be wise enough to to take us on on our word um, because we've only got honesty and truth in this otherwise it doesn't work and connect and go well you know if what these guys are saying I'm, I'm going to be smart enough to mm -hmm. to stay away from that and anybody that's that's done this um, I think I'll look straight in the camera and say they'd be a liar if they try and you know fabricate it in any way of putting it up on a pedestal and sugarcoating it and, you know it's just that once again that delusion of the drug so that the darkness and everything uh, it was it was so so detrimental in every aspect, Jay. Um, you know the rock bottoms and stuff that, that that I went through was was huge. Doing all the things that you know, like I'm a loving, loving, caring, happy, um, you know, emotional uh, person, and um, and in, in active addiction in meth, I, I'm a there's there's you know I've got Lewis and Benno, uh, which is which is my my other guy, and uh, 
and and he is a, he is ex a, a extremely uh, volatile, dangerous, uh, trigger happy, um, eggshell sort of guy that um, that that uh, that went to uh, some of the darkest places doing the darkest things, um, all fueled by by meth. And I, I look I look back, and that's why I'm being open about this because. Uh, I look back at it now in the position that I am and, and people need to see how much this drug changes you and what it does to you. It's the nature of the beast and it is a beast. It's, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's the animal of, you know, it's the animal that's going to come and eat, eat the, uh, the lion, mate, you know. He's, he's the, top, top of the top of the monster chain and, um, and he turns you into that. So, so you know, I've, I've got me... Um, Ice got me into uh, psychosis. Ice got me into all of the lifestyle, um, selling selling drugs, doing crime, um, doing doing. Uh, I won't sit here and try and um, and try and extract specific things. I'll just try and envelop it, and I've got to be careful too of what I do and don't disclose for many things. Um, but I, the smallest board of the do nots that completely sitting here contradicts who I am as my natural, true, harmonistic, loving, caring, nurturing person that now looks back at that person that I've become, that monster, and is just a completely different person and one that, um, that if it wasn't for, and that's why I'm sitting here tonight and, and I'm jumping on board with you guys as well and I've got the support of everybody because I feel, I feel that um, that I've, 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 I've got to put in for that to, to stop, you know, to, to, just to do what we can to, to get the awareness and the education out there because, mm. because that dark place is, is, not, is not anything pleasant at all. Um, you know, it got, me, it got me into psychosis, doing all of those things, and one thing after the next, you know, the associations, uh, the lifestyle of it all got me, got me uh, into crime, um, and of course, of course, um, I got pinched and um, and got locked up. My first sentence was um, just short of four months. And uh, at the time, I, I didn't know this. I was still in psychosis and had been for a couple, for about eighteen months. Um, when I got locked up the first time, my my ice use at that stage was the biggest that it's ever been. And I was I was um, selling to support my habit as well. And um, and support everyone else. That's sort of how it works. And um, and uh, and I got locked up, and uh, and my lawyer came and saw me in the in, in the in the jail, and um, he spent a couple of minutes with me and said, "Mate, you know," and and I was looking at, at, at serious charges, you know, um, serious charges, and, and 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 quite a lot of them. And um, he took a little look at me and said, "You know, we're going to get you in." A psychologist to come out and, and see you because mental health. Oh, I was off with the fairies. I was not there, and um, and that started the process of mental health. I, I then um, I then uh, did the did the did the lagging in jail for four months and got released on bail um, because I was then put into the mental health uh, going to get trialled under the mental health uh, system and um, and got out and uh, on bail under conditions and. Um, and uh, started using again straight away. Yeah. Didn't have these tools or the understanding about what I did. And um, obviously with the amount that I was using too, yeah. that four months uh, wasn't, wasn't enough to, it was still mm. in my system. And um, so I got out and I probably hit it harder than I'd ever hit it before, despite, um, you know, all the torment that I dragged my family through, the shame that, that, that you know, that, this was just this is this is this is foreign to my family. Mm -hmm. Our upbringing, the, the the way that we live life, everything that I was raised, the person that I was until not long ago, they didn't know what to do. They were they, they were exposed now to a world that was foreign to them. They there wasn't resources out there at this stage to to help or assist in any way, and it was just it was just not uh, how we lived, not the mm -hmm. people that we were. And so I got out and, and, I, and I hit it harder than ever, despite now being under, um, under the Mental Health uh, Act. And, and I went in uh, 
pretty quickly when I got out, the, that same psychologist that saw me first, I did a meeting with him and, and I've been using again. It was only about a week and a half, two weeks out of, of, of prison, uh, but I've been using and the psychosis was, was mm. still kicking. And uh, I remember that appointment vividly and, um, and I was absolute loony going to see him in his office and, and just off the Richter I was. And um, as soon as I left, he called up the mental health that was a Brisbane appointment and um, in the city and by the time I got back home I had a, a voicemail from, um, from the mental health at, at Southport there just around the corner. They wanted to see me and, um, and, and I, I delayed that for 24 hours of course, you was using and, and then uh, went in uh, with my mother and father for that appointment and, and straight away they put an involuntary treatment order on me and that's, that's when they... Um, when they really put their thumb on me, and from there uh, I got admitted into the into the psych ward for actually for the for the second time, because when I was in jail the, for that four month period, um, he said we're going to get you into the mental health thing. I had to wait to get into the mental health. So while I was a prisoner, I got admitted into the mental health for an assessment. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't get. Uh, and to this day, I'm not assessed with bipolar, schizophrenia, or anything like that. A drug-induced amphetamine psychosis was the was the um, diagnosis. So when that's actually when the mental health thing. So I, that was my first admission as a prisoner. Got out, saw saw the um, psychologist. He took a look at me and said, "You know, he's in a bad way." Um, they admitted me again. That was the second time, and um, and then there was a, then there was another two times during during uh, the next uh, about 18 months again and um, I was using the whole time like in and, in and out of uh, what I've found in recovery and, and um, I've already checked it's so alright with this to, to mention uh, Narcotics Anonymous it gives you the correct tools uh, to, to counter and to fight this, this uh, disease and you know and I talk about myself because that's all I can about my story is that, that I'm an addict that's got the the disease and of, of addiction. So the thing that that works and that counters that is is what they teach you introductory at rehab intensively, and then that continues on your own accord depending on how much you want it in the in the Narcotics Anonymous program. And uh, so they give you the right tools to, to balance it. But everywhere else, Jay, they didn't. You know, in the mental health wards and stuff, it would be some fella in a in a tie and a and a jacket trying to tell you about why you are this way about this and. Come on, mate. Like mm. you're not, you don't, un mm. you know, Mr. Blake. He doesn't understand, so it doesn't connect. Mm. Um, you know, whereas the hope of what I see here is this is real. It's addicts helping addicts, mm. and uh, and I hope well, I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. If there's not somebody out there that I'm, I'm reaching with this story that is yeah. getting momentum with what we're doing, you know, keeping it real, mm -hmm. um, keeping it honest, and how how it is out raw. there, raw. yeah. Yeah. If they speak about the therapeutic value of an addict to an addict, That's and it. I can resonate with that, yeah. you know, because they've been through it. Yeah. Just before we go on, mate, um, on that note, uh, Lewis was mentioning uh, his, his parents, his family during that. So if you are a family member uh, that has a loved one struggling with addiction, get in touch with us. We've got a family support uh, contact. That's 0481 844 five. You are not alone. That is something that we really want to yeah. share with the community. You're not alone. As, a, as someone struggling with addiction, you are not alone either. If uh, you are ready, if you're over it, if you're over it um, and you'd like to get in touch with us, give us a call. Uh, one, of the, one of the staff members, myself, DJ, um, can come out and have a chat to you and talk about your, uh, the direction you can go. Uh, if... Yep, family support again is 0481 844 So once again, people, you're not alone. Uh, get in touch with us. Lewis, such, mate, such a full-on story. So mate. during, so during that, that psychosis and the mental health wards and being on bail with, uh, with big charges still to be sentenced, um, I uh, uh, overdosed a couple of times on ice uh, and... Um, how were you using it? Did it end up intravenous? Or it did, yeah. 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 And, uh, and, and I was a person that was always... And I mentioned about heroin earlier on. That's something that I'd never go there. And, um, and, and, and the drug takes control so, so... And it takes control so rapidly, so quickly, that... Um, and, and those morals and ethics are out there. Those boundaries are gone. Uh, 
the drugs in control and there's limit, you're limitless until what you will do to keep feeding your habit. Mm. Um, and the longer it goes, the deeper it gets and the more extreme those boundaries, um, you know, the boundaries get shattered. There is no boundaries, you know, you do anything for it. So, so um, I, uh, the natural progression of, 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 of the drug, you know, there was um, the intravenous uh, started probably halfway through my addiction, and, and that's a whole other kettle of fish, too. That's that's taking it, taking it a a uh, another step up, but a, but but a universe down, you know, into that world as well. Um, yeah. So, what happened, man? Obviously, something happened during all that time. Something happened for you to go to change, or just when yeah, was that the, point? Do you remember you know, the, the point where you were like? Well, we're at we're at the point of um, you know the the psychosis, the mental health, and and the the, the uh, of course doing doing all of that, uh, I breached my bail. I got I got pinched again on uh, on fresh on new charges, and um, and I got locked up again. Now this this time uh, I uh, ended up doing twelve months in there, and. Um, and uh, face face the mental health court and uh, and wasn't deemed uh, suitable for a drug psychosis uh, case because that that's another thing that that's worth a mention is you know how how buckled the system is and how much change there needs in the judicial system about the encouragement about the the, the realness of this and the people out here suffering from from this disease and what it does to families is that you know that the courts need catch up quick and that is changing that is morphing and happening but you know the old book of law and how it was written there meth wasn't around with how it is now and there wasn't that understanding and and um, you know that black and white of it so so that was cut off and I was um, I was then sentenced under the under the the, the normal criminal uh, system now about two months into that that jail term my psychosis for the first time in years uh, actually started to lift and for the first time, it was like this fog, that blindfold that I talked about before, come off, and and uh, and I started to see that that you know, and the whole way through the psychosis, Jay, I thought I was running it, I thought I was killing it, I thought I was owning the psychologist, the mental health doctors, all the appointments, I thought I was completely in control, and it's all of them, you know, but I'm all right, and that sort of thing. But when I was in 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 jail uh, on my own, uh, it lifted and, and I realised uh, just everything that had happened for the way that it was. So, so uh, some incidents happened in there and it was an opportunity for to, you know, to hang my guns up on the rack and, and to let go of that and, and to change my ways. And, um, you know, so I, I found my faith again and, 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 and very... Uh, right word, religiously I went to work at, at, at changing myself and, and I did that through my, my Christian faith and, and I would have studied over 200 books in there, I, I worked. So it started in jail when you yeah, started my, yeah, 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 so psychosis lifted, I don't use in prison um, and uh, so so I started working on myself and I, and I was a bookworm, I just used the time in there to change my ways, I, I had the, from everything that had happened and you know, for myself and, and more importantly for my family and, and all of my network, what I'd done to myself and therefore dragged them uh, through, I had to change, I was so desperate to change and, and I worked on that. And over the over the 12 month period, uh, mum and dad picked me up from, from jail and, and it was all there, we thought, rehabilitated, changed, I was dead set adamant, anti going back to any of that, Jay. There was no way that I was going back to any of that, and I developed. I mean, I, I've been a Christian for my whole life, and um, and always had a, a strong basis. But but through meth, and, and I haven't mentioned something about my first overdose and near death experience, uh, which I've intentionally left out because it's still a, a bit too raw for me to go public like that sort of thing. But where I'm getting at with all of that is is my deep spiritual um, place that I'm at. So I worked hard at that. When I got out, my my family. Uh, everybody, I, to wrap it up nicely, I was in the most supportive, encouraging uh, place that 
me and my network, my immediate network, predominantly my family, could be. You couldn't be, and my family had backed me at this stage. This is most talk, This is most recent in my story. So up until now, we have been not even to hell and back. We've been stuck in the lake and fire down there. And the whole time, my family has backed me, and I would not be here. Mm. Ten times my ship would have been sunk ten times over. I would be dead, Jay. I would be dead if it wasn't for, you know, my father, my, 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 my pillar and my grace and, and, and my family clinging on to the hope that I would get through this, Jay. Just hoping that I would get through this. And um, so, so we were in that place. I got out. Um, I'd been sentenced. I, I've, still, I've still got uh, some time on parole. And um, got out, was with mum and dad um, at their house for the first couple of days. And um, everything, was, everything was good. And of course, I've been telling mum and dad, and, and that, that relationship were very close all the way through. And, um, and you know, so they'd seen the changes in me and the genuinity and, um, and that sort of thing. And, and I didn't get to really express who I was. Because remember, I'm only experiencing since meth started who I truly am outside of this this Benno monster for the first time while I've been in jail. My brothers and sisters haven't think it's all good, mum and dad. I'm back, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's rock and roll, get on with life, that sort of thing. That's how it was. Um, less than a you know, for a little bit of time, I spent at mum and dad's place under their under their roof and their their you know in the family environment. And, uh, and then I went back to my house with me and my dog. And as soon as I was on my own, Jay, as soon as I was on my own, uh, what did I do? What do you reckon I did? Did you go back to it? Did of course you? I did. Of course I did. Because I didn't have the tools, the correct tools, that rehab and the treatment give you to the awareness about why I do what I do. And um, you don't even have to be an addict to go through all of this with meth. You try meth for the once, then you'll be the rare person. Um, let's say you'll be the 2% of the population out there that never go there again, because you're going to go there. So so I got out, um, was with the family, all great, you know, you beauty. We're finally through, we're finally seeing some blue sky and um, I'm on my own within hours back one of my boys' house. Had some gear back at my house, using again, um, and it was. Oh, I won't. I won't go into that. It's a bit too graphic. But but I was straight back into it. Now, mm. now, as soon as the drug was back in my system, remember I was rehabilitated while I was in jail. I was in a really good place. I was myself I thought again. Thought you were rehabilitated. I thought I was rehabilitated. Yeah, and that deception of the drug, and um, and as soon as that drug was back in me, I went straight, immediate, back into that psychosis yeah. and that place mm. that, I'd tr that I'd cleared. And mm. um, now I was a way better addict than I was before. I wasn't associating, I wasn't doing the crime, I wasn't uh, doing the lifestyle, I wasn't hanging around the people, I was, but I was still using. Mm. Now I wasn't using as much but it doesn't matter how much of this drug you use, mm. uh, particularly with the history that I've got. As soon as that drug was mm. back in my system, it was game on again. And uh, and and uh, a couple of days after my first time back on the drug, what happened? You know, the jacks boo, pulled me over, and I get done DUI drug driving back in court again on parole. Only a couple of weeks out of jail. <laughs> you know, excuse me, and. Um, so it was, this is where the intervention happened. This is where my recovery Tell us about started. Where the actual recovery started. Yeah. How have you arrived at this point, mate? Because we need to wrap it yeah, up soon. Sure, so, sure. did the the light at the end of the tunnel and that there is hope, people, is that Lewis is here today, clean. He's been through rehabilitation, and that's what we really want to know about. We we've got absolutely not even once is the message. Absolutely. Tell us how did all that change mate how yeah. did you how did you get here yeah so um so and, I, and i'll give him a shout out jay devro from veterans 360 i've left that out of the the story i'm a i'm an ex-serviceman and um 
and so uh, my father was having having uh, coffee, and um, one thing led to another, and um, and we met this Jay fella, and uh, he was on the Gold Coast. He does work for uh, homeless and displaced veterans that are suffering from addiction and, and stuff like that, and, and he was visiting somebody, a digger on the Gold Coast, and uh, anyway. Uh, Dad got in contact with him, he called me, and uh, this is the day before court, going back to court, and, and said, I've met this guy, I've put him up at a, at a property of ours, let's go see him, and, and we went and had dinner with him, and uh, anyway, he, he was straight on the go about things, you know. Uh, for the first time, out of all of the people along the journey, this was a guy that knew, that understood, that had been there, he was in recovery himself, and that that, that, that was, was a man of action, and... Uh, and uh, we got on the phone to the lawyers that night, introduced him, to, agreed it was a good idea for him to come to court in the morning, which he did, and, uh, and he saved me. He came with paperwork saying we're going to support him, he's got assistance, he's got, um, you know, he's been under meth addiction, yeah. um, he's lost, so to speak, he needs help, we're here to help him, and, uh, and the judge really liked that. Um, so, so that's what happened. I, I then, I got a very good result in, in court. I did lose my licence for four months, which is all right, uh, considering my history and stuff. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I, I, I lost my licence. Well, I lost my licence that day. A couple of weeks later, of course, I was using... This didn't... Did it stop me? No, of course. Or, you know, all of this stuff, does it stop me? No, it doesn't. This drug owns you, bro. It owns you. Did it stop me? No, I'm still all right. I'll just use a little bit. That sort of doesn't work. So, but I was still using, and a um, couple weeks later, uh, my old man and Jay rocked up at my place at about 6 a.m., well, 5 a.m. in the morning. Of course, I've been up for days, as you do, and um, and uh, they rocked up and they intervened me. And um, 24 hours later, Jay, Jay was once again in the air, travelling on the Gold Coast, stayed behind, delayed his things. I was critical. I was, I was not in a good place. And... Um, and uh, he came back the next morning to my house. I had my bags packed, and off I went to the uh, the Hayter Clinic Queensland to, for treatment. And um, and it was only there. It was only there. like I didn't. I, this is this is, and I'll, I'll make this point to to highlight how much this drug gets you, because none of this stuff on my journey, and I've had ten lives to get here, and been through all of everything that you could possibly go through with this drug from myself, the people, and the family all through it. None of that stopped me. And while I went to rehab, I remember my mother asked me, she said, just before I left, she said, Lewis, what do you want to get out of going to rehab? And at the time, I, 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 just, I answered something like, I just said, I knew I needed to go. I was desperate, mate. Like, here I was, out of jail, was in that place, but I was back, worse than ever, Part of you is like, I need out of this. Fucking enough, enough, yeah. enough. And so I didn't go to rehab kicking and screaming. I wanted it. But it wasn't to get off meth. No, I just need a break. It wasn't, wasn't the meth why I am what I am. I got into treatment and uh, started to get educated on the stuff that made sense. Finally, I've been looking for the answers uh, that weren't there in any of the other places, but I found them in rehab. They explained to me why I am why I am. And why I do the things when I have a drug, it's, it, and, 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 and I won't get this misconstrued because we're talking about meth here. And, um, you know, I started to understand why. I am, and, and mum and dad uh, came and visited me um, close to the end of, of, of my journey. She asked, she asked me, she said, Lewis, she said, the, um, the answer that I was looking for when I asked you that question was for you to find why you are the way that you are and your relationship with drugs the way that you are and what it's done to you, done to us, done to everything and for you to find those answers in order to put it to bed and move on with your life to get over everything, all of the drugs, to get over that, that, that relationship that I seem to have with drugs and, um, and, and, and quickly uh, I started to get the right stuff that, that helped me and um, and I got on board with it, and um, you know I'm having a really, uh, I'm having a, a very strong recovery because I really want this after my journey and, and everything it's done to me, and I've survived. My my story is a one of survival, bro, 
um, I've survived it, and most people aren't as fortunate uh, with this drug. I've survived it, and um, and I'm here tonight with you guys and hooking up with you guys. I'll be working with you guys, getting the word out there, helping, and um, you know that's pretty much a wrap. And and, and you know I've kept it. I apologise. There's a lot that I've I've left out, and a lot of that's intentional. Um, but uh, I've, yeah. What a story, Extremely. man. Really well done being where you're at, absolutely. Is there anything you'd say to any kids out there that might come across this drug? Well, I like what you push about the not even once. Um, you know, the awareness wasn't there when I started using, but, but it's starting to get there now. Um, so, and it's tough, guys. It's tough out there with how society is. but. Uh, but you've got to, you've got to have it's and you only see you only see the very few of us that get back to here to give this story you know um, so that says once you try it you're going to the 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 likelihood is that you're going to end up in that world now the probability we're told is that 2% get out so you've got to listen to us that have survived it the few uh, that have come back here that are trying to tell you to stay away from the drug mm -hmm. you know and I'm not I'm not talking up um, you know let's call them softer drugs because they are softer drugs compared to this piece I'm not I'm not sitting here encouraging you to use other drugs and, and just to not to use to meth but um, but know this if you do try that then you're opening yourself up to lose everything that you've built in your life to this point uh, for all the goodness it is and the chances are of you getting it back are like that. Mm. So not even once, brother. Mm. Try and Lose stay yourself. away from it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Lose yourself. Mate, in one in one word, I always ask everyone that's on the show, in one word, down the down the lens, mate, describe meth in one word. In one word? Catastrophic. I would have to agree. Thank you for sharing, man. Like, what a fallen story. Like, I, I see that um, there's a lot more there as well. He's got a lot, a lot to share. Yeah. I can tell that you, you've got a lot there, man. And well done on your four months. May it keep continuing. May you get stronger in your recovery, bro. Beautiful to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Thank you, man. Jay. I really mean that. Thanks, Guys, man. few things before we go. Not even once. That's our main message. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you've got any questions, post them. Um, we'll get to them through the week. Danny, good to see you, mate. I saw a few people on there, Chloe and that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you are someone that is in recovery and you, uh, you would like to maybe become part of the team and uh, learn how to pres the presentation that we have for kids in schools, get in touch with us. The phone number is 07566 56063. You can go through all our training and maybe be a part of this mission that we're on, which is to eradicate ice addiction from our country. It does not need to be an issue. How are we going to do that? By layering in education and awareness to our children and this community. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks to everyone online. Danny, love you, bro. Lynn and Jim, thank you so much. Di, Chloe, uh, everyone that's on board. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.